right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for your patience uh, for the delayed start time today. Just a uh, couple things here at the top, and then we'll get right to your questions. Uh, as you're aware, Iran conducted a significant attack against Israel today, launching approximately 200 ballistic missiles targeting several locations in Israel. We condemn these reckless attacks by Iran, and we call on Iran to halt any further attacks, including from its proxy forces. During the attack, the U.S. military coordinated closely with the Israeli Defense Forces to help defend Israel. U.S. Navy destroyers deployed to the Middle East region supported the defense of Israel by firing approximately a dozen interceptors against the incoming Iranian missiles. Initial reports indicate that Israel was able to intercept the majority of incoming missiles and that there was minimal damage on the ground, but I'd refer you to Israel for confirmation and any questions on that. Is there in a better position to discuss? Please note that we're still assessing the attack and the outcome, so numbers may change as we receive updates. Additionally, no U.S. personnel were injured or harmed during the Iranian missile attack. Secretary Austin, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General C.Q. Brown Jr. and U.S. Central Command Commander General Eric Carrilla have been in constant contact with President Biden and Vice President Harris throughout the day to consult on the situation and U.S. actions. In addition to his phone call earlier this morning with Israeli Minister of Defense Gallant prior to the Iranian attack, Secretary Austin spoke to the minister again just a short while ago to get an update. He reaffirmed the United States' ironclad commitment to the defense of Israel and underscored that the U.S. remains well postured throughout the Middle East region to protect U.S. forces and defend Israel in the face of threats from Iran and Iran-backed terrorist organizations. We'll provide a readout of that call as soon as possible. To be crystal clear, as Secretary Austin has said, should Iran, its partners, or its proxies use this moment to target American personnel or interests in the region, the United States will take every necessary measure to defend our people. And separately, I do have an update to provide on DOD support to Hurricane uh, Helene response efforts, but I'll provide that at the end. Uh, with that, I'm happy to take your questions. We'll start with AP. Tara. Thanks, General Ryder. Um, what Navy destroyers were involved in helping shoot down an intercept? And given this escalation, um, what's being communicated between Secretary Austin and Minister Gallant right now in terms of tampering things down and potentially avoiding a wider war? Um, so the, the two Navy destroyers involved were the USS um, Bulkley and the USS Cole. Uh, in terms of the, the conversations between Secretary Austin and Minister Gallant, you know, I won't get into uh, you know, the, the <coughs> private discussions other than to say uh, we are consulting closely with them on next steps uh, and the continued defense of Israel. And then are there any plans underway to conduct a NEO given the increased uh, risk of a wider war? Um, right now, uh, there, there has been no order to evacuate. Uh, as you've heard us say before, we are a planning organization, so we, of course, plan for all contingencies. Um, but as of right now, uh, State Department has not called for an evacuation. Jennifer. Should we assume that the SM-3s were used by the coal and the Bulkley to shoot down the or to intercept the missiles? Um, I, I'm not going to get into the specific type of ordinance, Jennifer, other than to say, again, uh, they fired a dozen interceptors. And Iran said that they gave a heads up to the U.S. and to Russia. Uh, how much warning were you given by Iran? Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of any uh, pre-warning by Iran uh, about their potential attack. As you know, this is something we've been following very closely for a while. Uh, based on the threats uh, of retaliation by Iran. Uh, and so we've been closely consulting with Israel uh, for a while now to be prepared uh, in the eventuality. And as today demonstrated, uh, we were prepared uh, and we were able to successfully work alongside Israel to defend them from this attack. Let me go to Carla. Thanks, Pat. Um, you said that the destroyers shot down Iranian missiles. Where do they come from? Were they all from inside Iran or was some also from Yemen being shot by the Houthis? Uh, Carla, to my knowledge, and again, we're still assessing this, these were all uh, launched from Iran, ballistic missiles. Uh, and what I said was that they uh, fired uh, the interceptors uh, to, uh, towards those missiles. So. And then were any other U.S. assets involved in this defense? 
Um, of course, we have a lot of capability in the region, uh, a lot of things that are there to be prepared for a wide variety of threats. But in terms of uh, the, the launching of these intercept interceptors, it was those two destroyers. So just being clear, no ground-based interceptors were used in this. Correct. Were the um, any? Uh, were you aware of any duds that didn't fire off? That maybe Iran wanted to fire more than the roughly 200. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we're still assessing uh, the outcome of the the attack, and so we'll have much more information later. Um, but these are all, you know, our initial reports. And then on the second call with um, the secretary and, and Minister Gallant. Did he urge Israel not to respond or to to moderate any response to Iran, or did Israel share, did Gallant share any of Israeli intentions for their potential response here? Uh, well, again, as I'm sure you can appreciate, um, I'm, I'm just not going to be able to get into the, the details of their call other than to say, again, we're consulting closely about next steps uh, and the continued defense of Israel. What is it, What does Secretary uh, Austin think about the potential for an Israeli response here? Does he... W would he urge them without saying what he said in the call necessarily? But what are his feelings about the potential? Would he urge them restraint or? Well, look, you know, if you if you take a step back here, we fully support Israel's right to defend itself. You just saw a, a, a you know very significant uh, ballistic missile attack by Iran against Israel, uh, and so you know we'll continue to work alongside them to support their defense. Um, we of course do not want to see a, a wider regional conflict. You've heard us say that that many times and we'll continue to work towards that end. Um, but we also fully understand uh, the fact that uh, this was a significant attack by Iran. And so we're going to continue to consult closely uh, and we're going to continue to support their defense. Let me go to Laura. Thank you. Just a couple of clarifications. Do you say <coughs> that the U.S. destroyers had intercepted or shot down the missiles or just that they fired? I said that they fired approximately a dozen interceptors uh, against the incoming Iranian missiles. Okay. And um, were there any U.S. aircraft that sent that shot interceptors at Iranian missiles? Uh, what I've read out is what participated in the defense of Israel. Okay. And then, sorry, did, just one more. Can you say if there were any drones or cruise missiles that were involved in the Iranian uh, Again, attack? still assessing it right now. It appears it was uh, ballistic missiles, uh, no drones. But again, we'll continue to assess. Let me go to Joseph, and then we'll come here. Thank you. Um, just wanted to turn to the Israeli invasion in Lebanon. Um, for the past couple of months, the department and the secretary have called for de-escalation. Um, you guys have voiced your opposition to any ground incursion, invasions, limited operations. After we found out that um, the Israeli strike last week killed the Hezbollah chief, Hassan al it seems like the tone changed um, from the statements last night. The department and the secretary said they supported what Israel is doing. So, so what changed for, for, for a change in, in that tone and that stance from the department? Yeah, I think uh, the, the biggest thing, Joseph, is um, we fully support Israel's right to defend itself against Hezbollah. Uh, as we understand it, uh, they will be conducting limited operations to destroy Hezbollah infrastructure that's arrayed uh, along the border there that could be used to threaten Israeli citizens. And so uh, we're continuing to consult uh, with the Israelis to, to better understand how they intend to go forward. Obviously, I'd refer you to them to talk uh, or ask questions about, you know, details regarding those operations. Um, but, you know, we fully understand uh, as part of their overall efforts to return people home uh, that they do need to address those threats that are along the border there. Uh, and so um, all that to say, we will continue to consult uh, with the Israelis and other partners in the region uh, long term about how we can uh, ultimately de-escalate those tensions uh, and uh, get to a ceasefire. Have they asked for any help from you guys doing whatever it is that no. they want to do? No. Yes, sir. Uh, were the United States uh, surprised by the scale of the Iranian attack on Israel? Well, look, like I said before, um, we've been monitoring this for a while. Uh, Iran had been very public uh, about its threats to uh, retaliate, uh, and so it's it's something that we've been monitoring. Uh, certainly, this was a, a significant attack, uh, probably about twice the the size in terms of scope uh, of what we saw earlier. Um, but again, we're still assessing the outcomes of this, uh, and and as I highlighted at the top, uh, we certainly condemn this reckless attack, this direct attack against uh, Israel, and we'll continue to. Uh, support Israel's defense. Several uh, Israeli media spoke about a response tonight, the, you know, Israeli response tonight to this attack, uh, including some, not just Iran, some other Middle Eastern uh, countries. 
uh, will the United States be <coughs> assisting the Israelis in the respond? Well, I'm not going to speculate about hypotheticals. I'd refer you to the Israelis to talk about, you know. I'm asking about would, will the Americans help them with, yeah, with the response? Well, what you're asking me is if they're going to do something. And what I'm saying is I'm not going to speculate about what or if they may do. Uh, as I highlighted to several of your colleagues, we're consulting closely with the Israelis in terms of next steps, uh, with the emphasis being the defense of Israel. So let me go to this side of the room. Orrin. Uh, it, uh, essentially, a follow-up to that question: Is the U.S. willing to strike Iran in response to this? Are you are you putting that on or off the table? Well, look, Garnett. Again, I don't want to get into hypotheticals. I think I was very clear at the top uh, that should uh, U.S. forces be targeted by Iran or its proxies, we'll take necessary steps to defend our people. And I think we've also been very clear that we're going to uh, support uh, the defense of Israel. And so, I'm not going to get into theoretical or uh, speculative operations at this stage, other than to say, um, you know, we mean what we say and we say what we mean. And then what, a follow-up question. I Iran claims to have used uh, a new Fatah <coughs> missile, which is supposed to be a hypersonic ballistic missile. Can you assess whether they did use uh, new and advanced weaponry in this attack and whether they learned from the April attack? Uh, again, we're still assessing uh, the attack and the outcomes. And so, you know, we may have more to provide later, uh, but I don't have anything on that right now. Dan. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, two questions, please. Um, on Secretary Austin's statement last night, he referred to uh, being supportive of uh, operations along the border. Uh, is he open to uh, Israel <coughs> using operations on both sides of the border? Uh, along the border was a little vague there. Um, well, I, I think I'd go back uh, to how I responded to Joseph, right? We understand uh, and support Israel's right to defend itself against Hezbollah, as we highlighted in the readout. We understand that part of that is dismantling some of the attack infrastructure that Hezbollah has uh, built along the border. Uh, certainly, again, we don't want to see this, um, you know, broaden into a wider regional conflict. But we understand, again, uh, that that what Israel is doing are limited operations to destroy that attack infrastructure, uh, and then enable citizens on both sides of the border to to return home. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, we do think that a diplomatic resolution is the only way to achieve lasting stability and security across the Israel-Lebanon border. So, you know, we're going to continue to work to that end. But we also, again, understand Israel's need to defend itself. And then uh, a follow. Uh, uh, the State Department read out uh, a report on a attack on uh, a diplomatic facility at Baghdad Airport last night. Um, have you seen any other attacks uh, on U.S. forces, uh, I guess, since Friday? Uh, this one would seem to be on a diplomatic facility, but uh, be it in the last day, particularly at this heightened time of tension, uh, or just broadly over the last couple of days? Yeah, as of right now, I'm not aware of any additional attacks. Thanks. Sir. Um, the Iron Dome, how effective is it against uh, ballistic missiles and uh, some of the televised images appeared to show some of them landing on infrastructure. Are you aware of that? In, in general, was this attack more effective than the Iranian attack in April? Um, the, again, understanding that a lot is still, um, you know, very initial. Uh, as I highlighted, initial indications are that there was minimal damage on the ground. Um, you know, in terms of the specifics, though, I'd have to refer you to Israel really to talk through that. And again, as more information comes in, uh, we'll, we'll certainly know more. But uh, the initial assessment is that uh, Israel was able to successfully uh, defend itself, uh, of course, with the support from the U.S. Uh, and so, um, again, we may have more later on that. Helene? Uh, I, uh, thanks, Pat. I just want to be clear, because it seems like it's we're at a very dangerous time where any kind of ambiguity from the U.S. could lead to an attack on American troops. And when you say, we, I, I understand when you say that we're gonna defend any attack at American troops. I also understand that no Ameri that you said that no American troops were hurt. Therefore, are you saying the U.S. is not planning on a kinetic strike against Iran? Because right now, when you say there will be consequences, all of that, you're leaving it vague and people don't understand. And I wanna understand, are we going to be joining Israel in hitting back against Iran in a kinetic manner? Yeah, so with all due respect, uh, you're talking about a hypothetical 
uh, future, right, and presupposing what Israel may or may not do. So I'm just not going to talk about. But you said there will be consequences, and Jake Sullivan said there will be consequences. So right, what and that I think mean? broadly speaking, uh, you know, the the U.S. has been clear that uh, there will be security, economic consequences uh, should Iran attack. Uh, but I just don't have anything preview to preview, um, you know, specifically as it relates to that. All right. Yes, sir. Thanks, Pat. Um, just to clarify, um, did a, any U.S. aircraft track any of the missiles either before the launch or during the attack, even if they weren't involved kinetically in the defense of Israel? So I won't go into specifics, Chris, other than to say, as you well know, we have a, a wide variety of, of ISR capabilities throughout the region uh, to monitor and track uh, potential aerial threats uh, to include aircraft that do that. Um, so I'll just leave it there. Okay. Charlie. Uh, thank you, General. <clears throat> I know you said repeatedly that Iran doesn't telegraph these attacks, yet from early this morning we were told that an attack would be imminent. So we're, we're getting some sort of information from somewhere. Based on whatever that was based on, where does Iran stand now? Is this just the first salvo from your assessment? Are they positioned to go ahead and pull the trigger again at will? Um, I mean, that's really uh, a question for Iran, um, you know, as evidenced by this attack. Um, you know, they certainly maintain the capability to conduct additional attacks, as I highlighted at the top. Um, we call on them to halt any further attacks uh, and, um, you know, we'll continue to assess. We'll also continue to be prepared to respond uh, in the defense of Israel should they opt to do another one. We certainly hope that they do not. Um, but we obviously have to be prepared in that eventuality. I, I just want to clarify, I think you said earlier this is twice the size and scope from the attack of April 13th? Um, yeah, it's about twice as large uh, in terms of uh, the, the number of ballistic missiles uh, that they launched from the last. Do you believe it was their intent to actually do damage this time? Well, you know, look, um, you don't launch that many missiles at a target without the intent of hitting something. So absolutely, um, just like the last time, their intent is to uh, cause destruction. Uh, and so um, fortunately, you know, Israel has uh, very significant air defense capabilities and, and the U.S. of course played a role in, in helping uh, on that front as well. Thank you. Matt. Thanks, Pat. You said there have been no new attacks on U.S. forces in the region, but is the department tracking a, a greater threat now to U.S. forces, and are you taking any extra measures on top of the recent uh, plus-ups you've done for force protection? Well, Matt, I mean, we're, as you know, we're always taking force protection very seriously. Uh, we're, we're all very well aware of the heightened tensions in the region, and U.S. Central Command has been uh, for a long time now, you know, constantly assessing and reassessing the threat to ensure that our forces are protected. Like I mentioned, I'm not aware, as I come to the podium, I'm not aware of any additional attacks beyond the, the one that um, that Dan mentioned, uh, but it's something that we'll obviously be, you know, keeping a close eye on to, to protect our forces. Secondly, yeah. were there any other nations other than the United States and Israel who took part in intercepting missiles or helping to track them or anything like that? Yeah, I, I don't have anything to provide on that, and obviously I wouldn't speak for other countries from here. Yes, sir. General, um, I'd like to ask you if you guys talk to the European allies and if you ask for military support in protecting um, Israel in case of another attack from Israel or the proxies, or is at the moment it's only the U.S. Um, helping Israel military-wise? Well, I'll, I'll allow other countries to speak for themselves. Um, I will say, uh, and, and we'll put a readout on this uh, this afternoon, uh, you know, as soon as we're done here. The secretary did have an opportunity to talk to the, his uh, French counterpart earlier this morning uh, just to talk about the situation in the Middle East. This was before uh, the Iranian attack occurred. Um, and so, you know, we'll get that out momentarily. Broadly speaking, though, again, you know, um, in terms of uh, any European uh, uh coordination or cooperation with Israel, I, that's really for uh, individual countries to talk to. I won't speak to them. Uh, let me go to the phone real quick before I get in trouble. Uh, task and purpose, Jeff Shogel. Thank you. Um, I understand that the destroyers fired about a dozen interceptors. Did they hit any of the missiles? If so, how many? 
Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, so again, we're, uh, as you highlight, they fired the interceptors. Uh, we're still assessing, uh, again, outcomes of that. So I, I can't really, uh, I, I just don't have more information to provide at this time. Okay, let me go to uh, Heather uh, from USNI. Hi, thank you so much. Um, so you mentioned that the United States has the um, ability and intent to uh, respond if any of its um, service members are attacked. Uh, over on Friday, you had three U.S. destroy or sorry, two U.S. destroyers and a, a LCS come under attack from the Houthis. It doesn't, which is an Iranian proxy group. So would that give, you know, is there any, I guess, any intention to launch any attacks in response to those service members coming under attack? Um, well, you know, first of all, uh, Heather, uh, as you are aware, um, you know, there there were no U.S. service members uh, injured uh, in, in any of those attacks. And as always, uh, we will respond appropriately at a time and place of our choosing, but I'm not going to telegraph uh, or, you know, speculate on any uh, punches at this time. All right. And Patrick Tucker, Defense One. Hey, uh, yeah, thanks for doing this. So on the announcement of three additional aircraft uh, squadrons, uh, F F-15s, F-16s, A-10s. Uh, they used, I presume that they weren't involved in any of the interception activity. Can you talk a little bit about um, why they're there and, and what role they might fill now in terms of enhancing uh, security for U.S. forces in the region? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, as we've been highlighting for a while, uh, we have a robust amount of capability uh, in the Central Command and U.S. US European Command uh, regions. Uh, and, and what those capabilities provide us uh, is uh, versatility uh, in terms of uh, responding to a variety of contingencies. Uh, and so, you know, basically having the right tools in the toolkit to be able to respond appropriately uh, to any type of attack. Uh, or contingency situation. And so, uh, as you well know, Pat, uh, fighter aircraft uh, can can perform uh, a variety of missions uh, to include uh, taking down drones, uh, taking down missiles, uh, particular kinds of missiles, uh, as well as, um, you know, providing uh, ISR, uh, electronic warfare, uh, and uh, types of capabilities. So all of this comes together to provide us with options on how best to respond to any type of attack uh, and to protect our forces. Let me come back to the room here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, General. Uh, first, on uh, Iran, after today's attack and the expected response from uh, Israel, uh, is the assessment at the Pentagon still that the uh, situation in the Middle East is still under control? Uh, and we're not in all-out war yet. And the second question on uh, Lebanon, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what's your understanding to what Israel is calling limited ground operations or incursion? Um, is it limited by, uh, like, in time, in scope? How do you see this? Sure. Um, so in terms of your first question, uh, as you know, we've been working very hard from the beginning uh, to prevent a wider regional conflict. Certainly the, the type of aggressive action that we saw by Iran today uh, makes that more challenging. Um, but that continues to remain our focus and remain our goal is to prevent a wider regional conflict. And so we'll continue to stay uh, laser focused on that. Um, in terms of Israel's operations, again, uh, they're in the best position to, to answer questions, but our understanding uh, in consulting with them is that, again, these will be uh, limited operations focused uh, on dismantling uh, facilities that Hezbollah has built along the border to stage attacks into Israel. Uh, and so, you know, part of those discussions, again, have been focused on um, you know, making sure that um, there's an understanding as far as um, uh, potential mission creep. Um, and so uh, as it relates to the, the broader tensions in the region, uh, but again, we support their right to defend themselves from Hezbollah attacks. Uh, and so we'll, we'll continue to consult with them on that. As I mentioned, Wafa, ultimately, uh, we do believe that a diplomatic resolution is the only way to uh, achieve lasting stability and security there. Tim, a few more. Phil. A couple, couple <coughs> small questions. One is, why weren't uh, land-based air defenses used? And, and did you find that you had, uh, did the United States have fewer partners in trying to knock down these uh, Iranian missiles 
this time than I did uh, in April. Uh, I, I would compare it to a palette, Phil. You're going to use uh, the the you know capability uh, that you need to respond to a particular situation. So you know, I mean, um, uh, as evidenced by the fact that that our forces were able to so quickly support uh, Israel's defense. Uh, we have a wide range of capabilities arrayed to be able to respond to whatever those threats may be in the most appropriate way possible. So it's less about the platform and it's more about the capability. Uh, and so, uh, again, we still maintain a robust capability to be able to respond to any uh, potential future threats as well. And I just want to follow up on what Helene was asking, which was uh, important in the sense, that I think you said a red line that if Iran or its forces were to attack U.S. troops, there would be a, a U.S. response against Iran. At least that's what it sounded like you were saying. Uh, is, that, is that correct? What I said is it should be very clear that if Iran or its proxies use this as an opportunity to uh, attack U.S. forces, we will respond appropriately. Yep. Okay. Last question. Nat. Um, thanks, Pat. I just wanted to clarify a few things that you said. Um, <coughs> In terms of Iran's capabilities going forward, is it clear from the U.S. side that this is the imminent risk is over of a, another attack from Iran? Uh, well, look, you know, it's something we're going to keep an eye on. Uh, we certainly hope that there's not another attack, uh, but obviously Iran maintains uh, a capability and it's just demonstrated uh, that they're willing to use it to directly attack uh, Israel. And so we're going to continue to consult closely with Israel. Uh, on next steps, uh, and importantly, on the defense of Israel. So, on yeah. the <coughs> Israel's limited incursion, have they provided any sort of a timeline on, on how long they would stay there? Uh, I'd, I'd refer you to Israel to talk about that. I don't think it'd be appropriate for me to talk about that. Hey, folks, um, while there's been an understandable focus uh, today on the Middle East, before we conclude, I, I would like to provide a quick update on a topic closer to home as DOD continues to work with federal, state, and local officials to support uh, Hurricane Helene response efforts. Uh, as of this morning, the department has more than 6,500 service members actively engaged in relief efforts across six states. Florida has nearly 3,500 guardsmen activated, and Georgia has around 1,400 guardsmen on duty. South Carolina has activated nearly 500 guardsmen, along with two helicopters for their recovery efforts. Tennessee has around 130 guardsmen and seven helicopters activated. And Virginia has activated nearly 60 guardsmen, along with one helicopter and numerous high water vehicles. Additionally, since the storm passed, North Carolina has emerged as an area of particular focus after the historic levels of flooding that occurred in the western part of that state. A multi-state, multi-agency effort is currently underway with more than 80 guardsmen and 13 helicopters from Connecticut, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Iowa, Ohio, New York, Southern Carolina, or excuse me, South Carolina and Florida joining more than 800 North Carolina guardsmen and providing support to devastated North Carolina communities. U.S. Northern Command is also providing active duty support efforts to FEMA and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is providing emergency power planning and response teams to Georgia, as well as dam, levee, and bridge inspection to Tennessee and Kentucky and temporary power to North Carolina. For further questions about National Guard missions, I would encourage you to contact the specific states in questions. And for active duty support efforts to FEMA, U.S. Northern Command is standing by. For service-specific evacuation efforts, it's best to contact the services directly. As the DOD continues to aid response efforts, Secretary Austin and department leaders will continue to be engaged and stay in close contact with federal, state, and local officials to ensure resources are available and to maximize a coordinated response. And in the days ahead, the department will continue to keep our fellow Americans who have been impacted by this storm's devastation in our thoughts. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it.